What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode and issue of Hops Geek News. We are a podcast that discusses comic books, movies, TV shows, and typically we do a beer of the week. However, I'm drinking water this week. Lauren's not drinking beer this week either because it's kind of early. It's Friday when we're recording this. We well, I have... was gonna, but then you said you weren't. So I just dumped some Baileys in my coffee. There you go. You're drinking Baileys in your coffee. I, I know. I If I wasn't going out and taking the kids to excuses, Black Panther excuses. later and things like Gotta that. Gotta drive my kids around. Would. God, dad's off the sauce again. I guess that's a good one. <laughs> so I'm drinking water. But today's episode is a special one as we have a Patreon and friend joining us to discuss the DC Universe. And we're going to talk about the film Black Adam, which we haven't done on this show yet. So... Riley will be joining us later on to discuss DC and Black Adam, which is, it was a really good time. So shout out to Riley for hanging out with us. If you want to support the show, patreon.com slash hopsgeeknews. Find us on social media, hopsgeeknews. Find us by searching your favorite podcasting platforms, hopsgeeknews. That's where you can find us. Help us grow on YouTube, Facebook, all of that stuff. Help us grow, share with a friend. And now that selling our soul is out of the way, Lauren, our favorite segment, but I don't know if this was like a segment. There was there was some gray area here. So why don't you take over the uh, what did we look into this week? So I think it was Sean from Metal Corners. It was Sean, my boy. Love you. Okay. So he's always really good at calling us out. And usually we both laugh about it. Um, so this time we were talking about the Hemsworth brothers last week. And we were talking about the forgotten Hemsworth brother. And we could not name his name. We were referring to Luke Hemsworth. He's the one that's in Westworld. And he's the one, which Westworld, spoiler on, on news, canceled. Rightfully so. After the first season, I kind of went downhill anyways, probably because I had some forgotten Hemsworth. (laughs) Um, But uh, we were not confusing him with Liam. Liam Hemsworth is the one who's taking over The Witcher. He's the one from Hunger Games. And I don't know of anything else that Liam Hemsworth is in. I'm more a Chris Hemsworth fan. Um, So, yeah, that was the name we could not remember, Luke. So it's Luke, Liam, and Chris. Yes. Uh, I'm assuming Chris is the middle one because I feel like he seems like a middle child. I could see that. I don't yeah, know. He, he's he has definitely the most beautiful vibes. and remembered Hemsworth. That's for sure. I mean, he's Thor. Yeah. <laughs> One of them so dated I feel like Miley Cyrus. They do I seem think like was Liam. The oldest, the middle. Oh, she, the he's youngest. actually married to Miley Cyrus. Ugh, poor guy. What? Liam Hemsworth. Yeah. We're, him and Miley Cyrus are married briefly and then they got divorced oh, and yeah, then yeah, the yeah. whole thing. So Luke, their you're probably like the in, only like, normal ball. Hemsworth. I say that and like, there's nothing wrong with being a movie star and not remembered when Anyways, moving no, on. No, he's a good actor too. Like he's yeah, really, yeah, you know, he's great in Westworld, and he's great at pretending to be Thor in the Thor movies. Yeah, see, I stand on this. I stand by it. <laughs> he's not totally forgotten. He's just, you know, he's there. the least known. <laughs> um, and the other thing we were talking about, we were going back and forth about um, Johnny Storm and Jim Hammond and who's who as far as Torch. So the Easter egg, I did want to verify that because I wasn't certain. There is a Human Torch Easter egg in. Uh, Captain America First Avenger at the Stark Expo. This is, uh, it's the first torch and the first torch is actually an android. So you can see it in an oxygen deprived glass tube coined the synthetic man. So it's a quick little cameo that you see as soon as they enter the Stark Expo. And that is all it is. And it is a Jim Hammond one, obviously not Johnny Storm. Johnny Storm is a real person. He's real to me. Speaking of the, uh, Johnny Storm, did you know that Chris Hemsworth was like, or Chris Hemsworth, Jesus Christ, there's so many Chris's. <laughs> Chris, Chris Evans. Evans was talking about how he misses playing Captain America. We miss you too, Aww. buddy. We miss you too. So come, come back, back for Secret Wars. Come back for Secret Wars. We can reverse age. Come back. Didn't, isn't he the one that, didn't he want to leave? Like, yeah, this wasn't like a, leave. we're going to write he you did. out. He wanted to. I get it. He wanted, and now he's been doing cool things, but you know what? Come back. We love you. We miss you. You will never hear Baby, this. Baby, come back. But come back. You know, I feel like they aged him up too much in that end scene in Endgame. I feel like, because you get like old man Cap in the comic books and like the Namor one I'm reading right now that just started, like old man Cap is in there and he's still kicking ass and old well, man Cap's like, in the Falcon one too. The way they aged him up, he literally looked like a regular dude who was old. He had like no muscles or anything and it's just like... I feel like beefy buff Captain America, even in old age, is still going to be yoked out of his mind. So it's well, kind of weird. Yeah, he would at least look like that old dude that still goes to the gym in the 80s. Hold but on. But also, he doesn't age as fast. I got a thought. With Secret Wars coming, what if it was like 
not the real cap. He just came, right? He came back or whatever. But what if along the way, Captain America was in fact trying to come back? I know we had the dancing scene with Peggy. Just roll with this. What if the Secret Wars and things, the real Captain America was kidnapped or something and now he's being, you know, body swapped or something along those lines and they could re-enter. If he truly wanted to come back, they can spin it that way and then bring Captain America back. Be like, no, that's not really me. You guys were all fooled to think I was gone into this old frail man. Kind of like when we thought he was – uh, a Nazi and said Hail Hydra in yes. the comics. See, like they're they they could write themselves out of this, or he could be Captain America's son, yeah. or bring back the Peggy Carter show and have him in it. But he can't be Captain America; he has to pretend to be somebody else. Exactly. Like you could write yourself out of that that box of oh he's done, he's old. If he truly wants to come back, that is how they could do it with Secret Wars coming up, and that would be freaking. Just put sick. him in another multiverse. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's the option. So that's Maybe that's he could what be I have. In- in I don't know. What if you even in the watch? multiverse with Agents of Shield? True. Bring Look, back there, Coulson. There's, there's a lot of things you can do now. The multiverse is open. Secret Wars is coming. Kang is coming. We're time traveling. We're doing all sorts of crazy things. You could very easily bring Captain America back. Is we should do good? an episode like the most. Yeah, well, before those come out, we'll do our ridiculous predictions. Because okay, so there were some okay i'm not even gonna say anything else because i've seen black panther at this point and you haven't um so once you see that we can do an end of episode talks because we've talked about some of these characters before and we can see what we were right what we were totally wrong what we were in between and and our thoughts on that so but it is sometimes funny when i'll go back and i'll be editing something or on youtube or whatever and i'll hear like a clip of us talking about a show that has since been on and i'm like wow we were so wrong we were so (laughs) wrong about everything on here and it's just (laughs) but every now and then mephisto but even a broken clock is right twice a day. Once in a while, folks. Once in a while. May this be the second time we are right. Who knows? Ever. However, what you've been reading or watching besides Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, which maybe we'll talk about next week because I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to. It's been out for like 12 hours, folks. I'm I going know, I tonight when night. I'm recording this. I'm taking my. Uh, I also saw Black Adam, but we're going to talk about that at the end of this episode. Um, Superman and Lois. I've been kept, you know, watching more of that. And so they're in Bizarro World. I don't want to spoil mm. it too much. It's on HBO Max or only on second season. I'm still loving it. Hasn't jumped the shark yet. Uh, so they're in Bizarro World and somebody made a Seinfeld Easter egg. And I thought that was hilarious. Anybody who's watched Seinfeld knows Jerry Seinfeld loves Superman. Yeah. Superman is in the background of like every episode. Uh, he has friends who are like his friends, but not their, his friends. And he calls them, you know, it's Bizarro Jerry and Bizarro George. So I loved that. So many S- Superman Easter eggs in Seinfeld. And we got a Seinfeld Easter egg in Superman and Lois. But it's it's a lot of fun. I'm really liking this show. And then Andor, which Andor has been phenomenal. Oh my God. One way out. What a freaking episode that was. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people are waiting to binge it though. I, I, yeah. It's a shame that this, in my personal opinion, this is probably the most heavy, the greatest thing that we have been given in the Star Wars universe. Like, yeah, I love Revenge of the Sith. Yes. I love all the Force and Jedi and Sith stuff. But from a human perspective, like this, the rebellion is being built. You feel the weight. I've said this, the same thing uh, every episode. It's like you feel the weight of everything that's happening in this galaxy. Mon Mothma, she's trying to figure out how to fund the rebellion and has to sacrifice some of her values and things that she loves, such as maybe giving her daughter's hand in marriage to a guy who son a guy's son who, spoilers i'm like yes we're talking spoilers get over it and then <laughs> who is been notoriously hidden behind vfx and special effects and the same thing stupid ass anyways he's he's always been behind the scenes but getting a real chance at acting and th- that's to say like he's acted in some things but we really got to see his chops in this episode and particularly the last couple when they're in the prison there and Narkina five, or is it four? Narkina four or five? I think it's five. I think it's five. We'll we'll get corrected later. But it's the power, like the people. They really start to believe in something. Cassian and the crew. They get out, and then they prisoners. They they give that speech, and Andy Circus's character is giving that heavy, powerful speech. And then the prisoners all, and they're rushing. And then he gets to the end, and he can't swim. 
he finally gets to be free. Why well, you're really totally spoiling this. He can't swim. Yeah. Get over it. Here's We're the moral of the story. Everybody needs to learn how to swim. You never know what's going to happen exactly. when you might have to. You could to... be escaping a prison. And... Even in real life. I heard there was this is a tragic story, but there was some older guy that died during Hurricane Ian because their house got like totally freaking flooded and the ocean was like pulling him out to sea and he drowned and his wife survived because she knew how to swim. All right. Well, you know, we're. Yeah, I didn't mean to bring us down. Heavy and depressing. But like, I know. What's worse, me spoiling or you talking about old people drowning? Here's another not so fun <laughs> fact. I think the number one cause of kids dying in Florida is drowning. So it's oh important. My. That learn is the biggest fear of mine. But yeah, anyways, learn how to swim because on a happier note, it's just more fun to do in the Plus summer and cool off. When the great climate magical. wars come, you're going to need to swim in a cool lake eventually. So, oh gosh, it's going to be water world. Yes, but it's already water world over in Daytona right now on the east coast of Florida. It it's a shit show. Hurricane season, baby. I thought hurricane season was over. It is not. No, yet. it's not. It ends November 30th. Anyways, that's when they the all get the notice great. to cease operations of making hurricanes. Yeah. Andor is great. Go watch it. And I don't really have much more to say than that. I haven't really watched anything else this week. Um, we've we've gotten to see, you know, Titans. We've kind of talked about that. So we we're talk about it more as it goes on. Haven't really had time to watch. I, it's just this that time of year where there's I'm sitting there peeking into the Christmas movies, but haven't watched the Christmas movies yet and things like that. So let's roll into some news. Talk about some news. Why don't you go ahead with your news first? Uh, so Andor season two will begin filming later this month and will bring us to Yavin. The Rock and Chris Evans are currently filming some sort of Christmas franchise film called Red One. I don't didn't get any more info on that, but yeah, I saw it, some. I saw. Um, oh my god, I am such. Why do I podcast? Why do I do this? Because I oh, J.K. Simmons. You know, I was about to say, I always forget people's names, but there was a picture of The Rock and J.K. Simmons was dressed as Santa Claus and he looked dope. And ah. look, you put Chris Evans, The Rock and J.K. Simmons together, you know, I'm going to watch it. And especially if it's a Christmas movie or franchise or whatever it is. Uh, so Kylo Ren and the First Order are back at Hollywood Studios and will be performing their little show again. A lot of the Disney stuff that got taken away during COVID is just now coming back. Mm. Um, I think because they're bringing a lot of employees back and... I'm just want to see like the international people yeah. back at Epcot. Uh, Star Wars, the how do you say this one? The, the Acolyte. Acolyte. Yes, this is going to be insane. The cast is insane. This is going to be like a spy thriller in the Old Republic era with Jedi and Sith. So they've begun production. They have. It's going to be. Oh, it's going to be insane. If they, if they give us Andor levels with this show, forget about it, Ked. Forget about it. I saw somebody recommending certain books or comics to read before that show. Yeah, I'll go through and make a TikTok and whatnot. Like Okey the cool dokey. kids I would do. like to know that too. Um, we already mentioned Westworld. Indiana Jones series is in development for Disney+. Plus. Percy Jackson series has cast Lin-Manuel Miranda as Hermes. A I'm Pitch excited. Perfect bumper in Berlin will be streaming on Peacock on November 23rd. Yes. If it doesn't Netflix have Anna Kendrick in it, I don't want no part of it. Just I don't know if it does. There. He she wasn't in the trailer. It I don't has think. the one dude from that's in Modern Family. Yes, and all the oh, he's in Workaholics. That's what I was thinking of. Workaholics. Yes, I might have dementia. Uh, I don't actually know. There there might be some early onsets of dementia for me over here. It's because we're not drinking. Synapses connect quicker when you're drinking. That's true. That's Ugh, a fact. I just made it. up. Um, Netflix ordered two more seasons of Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer series. And my last piece of news, which we were actually talking about this show recently when Chris from uh, Geek Peak was on and we were talking yeah. Lord of the Rings. Carnival Row with Orlando Bloom will return for a second and final season this February on Prime. That's a show that had the fairies and stuff. Boy, Amazon and sure like, takes their time making I know. a second <laughs> I season. Completely... We're still waiting on Invincible. I completely didn't. I thought this was on like its fourth season already. No, there was only one season. And I mean, I watched it a long time ago. Like this when Chris like mentioned that ago. show, <laughs> I was like, I had completely forgotten about it until he mentioned it. And I was like, oh, I remember. But it was also, it weren't too many episodes. So I feel like I watched it pretty quick. Yeah. So, I, I haven't watched it, but. No. Interesting. That's Amazon, you're taking your sweet time. The boys, it takes us for like a year and a half to get another season of the boys. I it feels know, like. But then it comes out and it's perfection and we forgive exactly, them. Exactly, but. Interesting. So, well, they're supposedly working on sideshow projects for the boys too that we keep hearing yeah. about. But Gen V or whatever it was, and all these other side projects and things. Amen. 
the G-Men. I don't remember what it was, but I know it was one of the other superhero groups from the comics. Yeah, they are. Did you also, speaking of Netflix, Chris Rock is going to be doing a stand-up, which will be the first ever live stand-up performance on Netflix. I didn't know he ever did stand-up ever. Chris Rock? You didn't know he did stand-up? Oh, Chris Rock. I'm thinking The Rock. We've spent the last hour and a half talking about The Rock. Oh, my God, no. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I'm very familiar. Chris Rock is hilarious. His stand-up is hilarious. Yeah, no, Chris Rock is going to be doing the first ever live Netflix. And then... The last little bit of news before we roll over is a very sad day. As Kevin Conroy has passed away, he has been the voice of Batman for 30 plus years. You might have known him growing up with him on Batman, the animated series. He's been at Comic Cons every year. He is Batman, he is the voice. And uh, for a lot of people, this is where their nerd beginnings happen with Batman, the animated series. It holds true today. Like, Batman, the animated series is still an absolutely phenomenal series. Everybody should watch it if you haven't, Lauren. And it's one that when I was really struggling early in my 20s, like this was a show that I would put on as my comfort show to kind of like help me drown out whatever was going on in my life at the time. And so to hear that he passed away, it kind of sucks. That one hits hard. I, I don't really, celebrity deaths hit or miss, but this one's like, he was only 66 years old. And that's not old at all when you're looking at today's day and age when there's people living to a hundred and 66, you still have a long time ahead of you. So it's pretty sad. I, I, nobody knows really what happened just that he passed away and yeah, it's, it's pretty bittersweet having such an icon that you'll, you'll never get to really hear him say I'm Batman ever again. And his version of Batman for many is the standard and without a doubt, Nobody will ever voice the character as well as Kevin Conroy ever did. So rest in peace to him. And moving on from that, let's uh, let's roll into some happy topics. We're talking a lot about death this first half of the episode. A lot of sad things, mainly Lauren over there. Maybe she's got you, you okay. Do you need someone to talk to? You good? Oh, okay. <laughs> I just listen. <laughs> but I didn't want to interrupt. You were doing like a very sweet tribute to the guy. Yeah. Well, you know, you're talking about old people drowning, all that kind of stuff. Just making sure you're well, good over there. I said that before. <laughs> that was just a warning. Learn to swim. <laughs> no, we've just, it's been nonstop hurricane coverage here too. And like, there's literally, so Ian hit at the end of September and did some major devastation to the coasts. But then Nicole hit yesterday and there were, and what happened was Ian destroyed a lot of the dunes, which are natural protection for a lot of the houses on the mm, beach. And there true. are houses you can like YouTube it that are, have literally like fallen into the ocean. I've seen pictures and videos of like pools hanging out over like a beach because they're only being held up by poles. Like, I mean, houses are literally falling into the ocean yeah. and there wasn't much warning. Like sometimes you don't get much warning or sometimes you don't realize how much, damage these things are going to it's like i my goal in life is to live on the beach and every time we have a hurricane i'm like oh i'm glad we're inland well i'm glad yeah i mean well it's scary to live on the beach now just but whether of, you're in a superhero movie or real life just yeah learn to swim learn and also swim. go snorkeling because it's fun learn to swim tell your loved ones that you love them and from there we're going to move on to our main topic which is the dc universe and black adam so we'll be back in just a moment Thanks for listening. And what's up, everybody? Welcome back. As we talked about earlier, we are going to talk about our favorite things from the DC universe in the past decade, our favorite movie, TV show, best CW show, HBO Max show, all of that good stuff. We're going to talk a little DC. We're going to talk some Black Adam and Shazam origins. And we're going to talk about the movie Black Adam because we haven't done that on this show yet. And of course, we're joined... By our good friend of the show, Riley. Welcome to the show, my dude. I'm glad that you're here joining us to talk about some fun things. What's up? You ready? We're going to do this. So first things first, let's talk about our best DC show in the past decade. We'll, we'll start with you, Riley. What was your favorite show in the past? You know, what, what, what DC show do you vibe with the most? I mean... I grew up watching, well, I grew up, but I think it's got to be like the CW Flash. Yeah. Just that that molded my whole character. It's just, I don't know about it recently. I stopped watching it a while ago, but. 
Me too. I was about it's to okay. ask that. I think a lot of people <laughs> did. It's okay. Me too. I haven't seen it since like season five or six, but you know what? Those yeah. first few seasons were peak television. I agree. Well, and while Arrow started the universe, I really feel like Flash is what sucked a lot of people in because like I started watching Flash first. So I feel like I don't know why it was more popular, maybe because it wasn't as dark and it was more family friendly, so to speak. So it got a, a younger audience in. But I mean, yeah, we wouldn't have any of these CW shows today. I feel like if it weren't for Grant Gustin, yeah. if only he could replace he who shall not be named. Yeah. Oh, man. Gosh, I love that. But uh, he, there's like, what, nine seasons of The Flash now? It's, yeah, it's long for him. We're going to yeah. end it. And I think he's ready to move on, unfortunately. I mean, he's been a great Flash and I love the show. Granted, you know, there's only so much you can do with the CW budget anyways, but it's he, he's been the yeah. Flash. He's been the best. So, Lauren, what was, what's been your favorite show in the past decade for the DC universe? See, if I'm going to go CW, ugh, it's a hard one. I, I'm going to go Peacemaker. I think Peacemaker has been the best and I've really even enjoyed Doom Patrol more than I expected, but I think Peacemaker was just, it got better and better and better. And granted that's still in the first season. So, and it's on HBO max. So I feel like that gives it two advantages. Um, but I, I have loved that one. Cause you know, do you have the typical issues with CW where they have to fill 22 episodes and that's a lot. So then you get episodes that are not great and you get scenes that are filler scenes and then you have stories that aren't told enough of. So yeah. I'm going Peacemaker. That's true. Yeah, I totally forgot about Peacemaker. <laughs> well, there's, there's been you so can much you can change on. your answer. You can always change at any point. Be like, wait, go back. That was my favorite CW show. Well, we're talking DC. It's definitely this. Yeah. Peacemaker's pretty high up there. I think the Flash molded me, but Peacemaker's probably my favorite. Yeah. I that that's definitely I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um now if if Titans actually finished as strong as all of their seasons start out, then I would Oof. easily say Titans. So far, I've seen the first five episodes of the latest season of Titans. And so far, I will say it's it's been very strong. It hasn't taken that dip in quality that we all kind of expect. Uh I am gonna watch episode six here shortly to review, but I want to say them, but I, I would go Peacemaker as well, just from start to finish. What John Cena did, what James Gunn did. We got Justice League cameos. We got that blend of comedy, humor, things of that nature. And then also being pretty pretty serious at times. It gave us some serious John Cena acting chops. So mine would be Peacemaker as well. Titans, you're so close, man. You're so close. If you can stick the landing this season and start to move forward, then maybe. But Honorable mention to Doom Patrol, just because seeing Brendan Fraser come back and the way he's just killed it in that role and how goofy and weird DC has leaned into that universe. That one's for me too. But CW show, I'm with Riley. My favorite CW show is definitely The Flash. Um, he's my favorite character. And, you know, as soon as they brought Barry Allen into that episode of Arrow and you're like, oh, it's happening. We're moving from Arrow to this. And then all the that, crossovers that they've yeah. done. The, the first season of Flash was like truly, absolutely just peak television with Tom Cavanaugh in there. And he was the whole time reverse Flash and just everything that went in behind that. And it was a great story. It was very emotional. So Flash for me is definitely my favorite CW show. But Legends of Tomorrow also gets an honorable mention in that realm for me because Legends was very consistently strong. And we got to see all sorts of different characters pop up and different actors and the, their strengths and stuff like that. So, Riley, what for you, would you still say Flash is your favorite CW show as well? Uh, yes, because The Flash was like really the only one that I watched throughout well, until like it kind of fell off. But I watched like the first couple of seasons of the era of Arrow but and Legends of Tomorrow, but... I don't know. The flash just is just the best for me too. Yeah. Legends that's... got better, but I felt like season one, it was like, this is where all the CW DC characters go to die. Like it's all the people that couldn't act and they just threw them in a show together. I was like, what the hell? Other than Rory. I always liked Rory. Um, but then they pulled it together and like, 
I think one of the things that made legends so great was that they made fun of themselves and it had a lot of like meta stuff in it. And so they were able to do the things that like Oliver Queen took himself too seriously to do. So, but that's another one. Like I do intend on finishing all these shows. I just, I don't know. It's just, there's too many good shows. You got to prioritize right now. Yeah. No, that, that, that's there is, and that we're we're in that golden age of television, so to speak, too, where there's just so much good stuff that's out there, and it's how do I pick and choose? Like, what do I do? So, I agree there. What about for you guys? What is your favorite movie as far as DC goes in the past? You know, I'll say thirteen years because Man of Steel technically came out like thirteen years ago. So I'm gonna go ahead. We can include that one as well. I'm going first, Wonder Woman, and I'm pretending the second one didn't happen. It didn't. We all we all know it. It didn't happen. I honestly felt like when I saw Wonder Woman, like it was such a great story from beginning to end. And it seemed like they had a good balance of comedy, action, heart and storytelling, which I feel like DC tries to do and doesn't always do it very well. Yeah, Um, I think they did a good job with Black Adam, too, which we'll talk spoilers at the end of this episode. Uh, But I loved it so much. And I think that's why I hated Wonder Woman, too, even more because I had such high expectations and it just punched me right in the face with love. It was so bad. Yeah. What, uh, what about I expected you, more from Pedro Pascal too. Um, so we're talking DC movies all the way back to 13 years ago. Um, I, I think Wonder Woman's pretty high up there for me, but the new Suicide Squad movie is probably the best. In my opinion, it was just like I watched that movie a solid three times, even though it was so long. I just I love that movie so much. See, I'm with you. I think that might have been mine as well, just because coming off the heels of the you know the first Suicide Squad movie by David Ayer, which uh, wasn't very good, but um, you know, just. I, I thought what James Gunn did with this and we had John Cena again as Peacemaker playing some really good roles and they brought Rick Flagg back and they, you know, we had Sylvester Stallone as King Shark and all that kind of stuff. And they really surprised us in the beginning of that movie where they killed off half the Suicide Squad and then really made it about these characters. And so I'm 100 percent with you. Yeah, I, I love that they made us care about like characters that aren't necessarily like a tier right that was so cool and they were brutal and they didn't just say oh the first suicide suicide squad never happened like they made fun of it a little bit and yeah it was dope i i do like that that was easy f- for sure and it, it kind of put dc and now we have james gunn after that kind of has been tapped to run you know the dc universe so a lot of good things going on and Lauren, what do you, what do you got next? What do, what more do we have? Okay. So then I wanted, <coughs> excuse me to talk I'm about, I'm dying. Yes. Um, this connected universe. Now that we have, you know, if you, you saw black Adam and peacemaker and we're seeing all these crossovers, but it's also gets a little confusing at times. So I wanted to go over what all is part of this new specific universe. Obviously everything's been connected. Uh, if you watch Arrowverse or any of that stuff and you saw crisis on infinite earths, they literally, I know I've said this before and I'm going to share the, the clip on our socials when this episode comes out. Cause if you did not watch that, just watching the clip of getting to see doom patrol and Titans and you know, uh, Tom Welling from Smallville, like that was so fun. They even incorporated like the Adam West, Batman like it, it was so fun to see all these connected but now we're seems like we're focusing on this Henry Cavill Superman and I guess Ben Affleck is our Batman whether some of us like it or not and you know Jason Momoa is Aquaman and so I kind of wanted to go over those movies I think it starts with Man of Steel right it does yes it, it does start with Man of Steel and then from there we kind of go on to Batman v Batman Superman, versus Superman Batman v Superman was kind of supposed to be the sequel to Man of Steel in a way. And then of course, justice league and all of that good stuff. So, yeah. So, yeah. So we have man of steel, Batman versus Superman, justice league, suicide squad, one and two wonder woman, one and two, which are we, are we pretending two didn't happen? We're still, we can't just forget that happened. We, unfortunately we can't. Okay. But, uh, 
you know, you can't make a wish and have it come true. That it's unfortunately, no. There's we can only... some good things about that movie. We can't just ignore it. <laughs> I mean, okay, Kristen Wiig's makeup is. was good. <laughs> uh, there is True. some good things. Oh, that one just it hurt my stomach, man. Um, and then Peacemaker, Black Adam, and Shazam. So uh those I believe are the main ones we're dealing with. Uh, because yes. Titans has a different Batman, uh, which Titans is connected to Doom Patrol. So those seem to be in their own universe. Um, but James Gunn, a, do we think he's just gonna focus on this universe because he's already taken part in Suicide Squad and Peacemaker? Do you think he'll just extend on this universe? And where does Robert Pattinson fit? Because we're getting another the Batman, right? We are, it hasn't been officially announced, but yes, allegedly we are. Uh, Riley, what do you think? I I hope they do a, a similar thing that they did with the new Suicide Squad, where they just kind of acknowledge it, but also don't go too deep into it. Yeah. Um, I think Robert Pattinson... I, I personally, I think he is the best Batman. I don't, I don't really care for Ben Affleck, which is, I know, is a controversial opinion. How dare but... you, <laughs> especially on this podcast? <laughs> um, I think Robert Pattinson and um, the new Joker, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. I think they're like the same universe, kind Ooh. of. But I don't, I don't think Robert Pattinson will be like the same universe as henry cavill superman and unfortunately for for me but i don't know i i I still think with the right director james gunn it could be really good yeah i do wonder if they're going to lean into any of the multiverse stuff that we have i mean i know everyone would be like oh marvel did it first but i mean no they didn't though because dc did it in on cw first well, right right <laughs> I mean, we all know that and this isn't a marvel versus dc debate but you know if anybody does anything regardless that's just how it turns into but i know with like rumors of ben affleck coming back to shoot certain scenes and things like that i am curious to see how they'd go forward especially because now black adam has brought a character back so to speak and we've kind of moved on there and now they're hard at work we have peacemaker they brought the justice league into peacemaker which james gunn had a hand on and so they i don't think he's going to retcon his own stuff in that regard and i i think he's going to kind of do both they're going to kind of we're going to get the matt reeves batman maybe it crosses over maybe it doesn't or maybe ben affleck decides he wants to come back so my maybe, brought, yeah. maybe we'll get Christian Bale too. Maybe Christian Bale will like make an appearance or something like that. Yeah, that'd be kind of weird. Like get all three. We should do together. like a flashpoint and have like Christian Bale be Robert Pattinson's dad. I don't know how. Like he could play Thomas Wayne. That'd be cool. <laughs> like I don't know the age difference in there, but you can always age up or age down nowadays. I mean, I think we yeah, got to figure out the Flash first. <laughs> God, yeah. God oh my bless. gosh, I didn't even think of that. It's supposed to come out next June, I think. Still, so I don't know. So we'll see. I don't know the legalities of this and I would kind of be curious to look into it is bat we, I mean, I know they've talked like bat girl or bat woman is completely scrapped. Never going to see that. That is on the cutting room floor. But do you think that will ever glimpses of it or scenes of it or anything will ever see the light of the day now that they've changed ownership or not ownership, that there's a new CEO in town. I kind of hope they didn't burn every single copy of bat girl. Like allegedly they did because I would love to see that get leaked someday. It just seems so so crazy. It's like, let me make this amazing painting and then not even take a picture of it and just destroy it. Right. Hmm. All right. Well, um, I did a little poll on Instagram. It said, are you excited about James Gunn leading the DC? Uh, 50% of people said, hell yes. 25% said DC is still going to have issues. 12% said skeptical, but excited. And 12% said, I'll just stick with Marvel. Hmm. So majority of people are excited. Yeah. And that's all I got there. Um, anything more general before we go into some Black Adam and Shazam origin? All right. Well, no, then buckle up because Shazam and Black Adam are very interconnected, intertwined. Um, and we're about to go into how they are like, how they are different. We are not going to ruin um, the movie's 
at all. Well, there are a couple things I say about the old Shazam, but the new Shazam comes out March 17, 2023 and black Adam just came out last month. So if you haven't seen that yet, we won't do spoilers for the movie until the end, but I do make a couple references to that happened in the first Shazam movie, which I need to rewatch that movie before the next one comes out. All right. So both these characters say Shazam. So why the hell do both these characters say Shazam? Um, Shazam is actually an acronym that stands for a group of gods or heroes for Billy Batson, who is the character we know Shazam, uh, Flynn Rider, Zachary Levi. I always forget his real name and just want to call him Flynn Rider. For Billy Batson, the gods are Greek and Roman. And so S is for Solomon for wisdom. H is for Hercules for strength. A is for Atlas for stamina. Z is for Zeus for power. A, Achilles for courage. And M, Mercury for speed. So he basically gets these powers that these gods have have when he says Shazam. So when Billy Batson, who is a child, says Shazam, he gets powers from each of these gods. Black Adam, however, gets his powers from Egyptian gods slash heroes. For Teth Adam, his powers come from S, Shu for stamina, H, Hera for swiftness, A, Amon for strength, Z, Zahuti for wisdom, A, Aton for power, and M, Mihen for courage. I should have had Matt say those because I probably butchered him. Yeah, I'm always awful at names. So, hey, you did great. Great job. <laughs> Thanks. That's the best we could have done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Shazam was created by Bill Parker and artist C.C. Beck and first appeared in Fawcett Comics, Wiz Comics number two in February 1940. So this was not originally DC. He was inspired by the success, ironically, of DC Superman. In the 40s, Shazam, then known as Captain Marvel, was more popular and outsold Superman comics. Ooh, that's right. He did. So the basic story of his first appearance is similar to the movie, actually, where Billy, who is a 12-year-old orphan, is lured into an abandoned subway station, which is pretty creepy if you ask me. But hey, you know what? I used to say lured and I think pedophile. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like he was lured into a subway station by this magical being. Hey, kid, you want some magical powers? (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) And so he's lured in there. A magical subway car transports him to the Rock of Eternity, the magical lair of an ancient wizard named Shazam. By saying Shazam, a bolt of magic lightning transforms Billy into Captain Marvel or Shazam, depending on how you want to know him, a superpowered adult dressed as a superhero with a lightning bolt on his chest. He's then given a mission to fight as a champion for good by the wizard, who promptly dies but eventually does return because in comics, nobody ever stays dead. And uh, Wiz Comics, issue number two, introduced Captain Marvel's e- evil arch enemy, Dr. Thaddeus Sivana, who was the villain in the first movie, actually. And I actually liked him as a villain. I thought he was really cool. And uh, I forget the actor's name off the top of my head because I'm dumb and Lauren's muted and trying to t- say words. But what do you got? Oh, then you didn't hear my Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben stays dead. Ah, well, that's true. He does. He does. And then later, DC acquires the rights to Shazam and Black Adam, which Black Adam, or also known as Teth Adam, was created by Otto Binder or Binder, whichever one. I don't know. I'm illiterate. And CC Beck. And it first appeared in the debut issue of Fawcett Comics, the Marvel family comic book in December of 1945. As they b- both started at Fawcett and came to DC, Black Adam and Captain Marvel and the Marvel family, aka the Shazam family, which is the group of superheroes who we see in the movie, they five fought each other for decades. In fact, almost 80 years worth of fighting. In recent years, however, Black Adam has been written more as an anti-hero rather than a supervillain. And this is more of what we saw in the movie I can't wait to get into that because uh, did we see more of that in the movie? I don't actually know. <laughs> I feel like we did, but yeah, I guess, I guess that's up for interpretation. Yeah. Okay. So a bit of Teth Adams origin. Cause honestly, after I saw the movie, I was like, I need to know more about this guy. Um, so some of his origins with Shazam slash bats and sprinkled in here. So they're again, like I said, they're very intertwined. The history begins circa 1100 BC. The actual Shazam became a high priest to the Pharaoh Tut the third of Egypt. So the actual Shazam is not Billy bats and it's not the child. Shazam is, is the wizard who basically anoints, anoints them powers, which I feel like can get very confusing because we call him Shazam. So Teth Adam of Kondak, a young, he was a young prince and son of Ramses, impressed the wizard, and he the wizard felt he was a very fair and decent person. 
But before Shazam could bestow his powers, his daughter Blaze made a deal with the god Set. Then when Teth Adam spoke the name Shazam, instead of gaining the wizard's powers, he got the Egyptian powers that we had mentioned before. So even though Seth Adam says Shazam, he does not draw power from Shazam the wizard. Mm. Teth Adam served Egypt for many years, but this duty drew him away from his family. And while he was away, the mad priest Octon ravaged conduct and killed Adam's family. Uh, the priest was powered by the orb, the raw. Adam could not apprehend Octon, so he entombed his family and returned to the court of Ramses. That would be a terrible way to die. Yes, a disparaged would. Adam continued to serve in Ramses' court and allied himself with Prince Khufu, later known as Hawkman. Uh, at this time, he met three travelers from the future, Hawk Girl being one of them, Mr. Terrific, and Captain Marvel, who is shazam see how this is confusing it's there's just a lot going on okay (laughs) so adam felt relieved that his legacy would continue through marvel captain marvel being shazam part of us it's clearly also legalities because if we could just call him captain marvel it would make it less confusing when just referring to dc but we'll go into some of the legalities in a bit in a minute So Adam felt relieved that his legacy would continue through Marvel. Then with the help of these visitors and the wizard Naboo, Adam was able to capture Octon, who he killed as retribution for murdering Adam's family. Revenge is not the Jedi way. It is not. Would you like to tell us what happened when Adam returned to Kondok, which I'm probably not saying right. He returned to Kondok and forcefully overthrew the government that was there and appointed himself as the ruler. The wizard Shazam was made aware of these events and thinking that Adam had been corrupted by Blaze, unleashed a powerful spell, trapping Adam's soul in powers within a powerful scarab, rendering Adam's depowered body, now several hundred years old, into a withered corpse. Shazam buries both the body and the scarab in the tomb of Ramses II, where he had planned for it to remain for all eternity. In death, the former hero is referred to as... Yeah, not even try to pronounce this, but uh, Kem Adam, I'm assuming, K-H-E-M, Black Sounds Adam. Sounds good to me. Disillusioned by what he perceived as Adam's betrayal, Shazam went several millennia before appointing a second champion to fight evil in his name. Years later, Ramsey's tomb was ev- excavated by Billy Batson's parents, a colleague of Batson's and Adam's descendant, Theo, murdered the Batson's after finding the scarab, and Billy ended up on the streets after his parents died. One night, a mysterious stranger, later to be revealed as the spirit of Billy's father, convinced, like I said, nobody stays dead, folks, convinced Billy to follow him deep into the subway tunnels. That's Didn't just convince, he lured. Really, really creepy. Really, really creepy, man. Billy found a marvelous train decorated in hieroglyphics in mystic runes, and Billy rode the, st- and the stranger rode a train as one child does with a complete stranger in the bowels of the earth. Of Ends course. You know, a- <laughs> the 80s was a crazy time. We do. So think of like my father-in-law tells me stories about how he rode buses by himself to like different cities. So it's like kids, it's like <laughs> when this story God. first happened, this wasn't too- happen today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's no. definitely doesn't. It doesn't at all. And yeah, so the ancient wizard revealed himself that he had selected Billy to be his champion to fight for good as the strongest and mightiest man in the world, Captain Marvel. To that end, Shazam ordered Billy to speak his name. And then what happened next? Well, when Theo saw Billy Batson as Captain Marvel, he realized the power and he said Shazam and Black Adam. And then the two battled with Shazam temporarily removing Adam's ability to speak. This was undone by the evil blaze and Adam later spent time in deep space. Black Adam joined the Justice Society of America after claiming he had rid himself of Theo Adam's evil influence. Captain Marvel joined as well because he wanted to keep an eye on him. Generally, Black Adam was an adult to begin with, but there was a run where he was Theo Adam, a 14 year old boy, much like the Shazam storyline. Mm-hmm. Which I think that that having him be a kid versus an adult, I feel like there's a level of like innocence or whatever. So it makes you seem like more altruistic and more, you know, it's that that little kid who wants to be the superhero um, and you don't have as much baggage and hate and revenge in your heart. That's uh, as to the name Black Adam, it was retconned in Shazam 28. Shazam named him Kem Adam, which uh, Matt had mentioned before, which in ancient Egyptian, it actually translates to Black Adam. This was a nod to the name of the land and the people in that land that Black Adam would protect. Um, there's a ton more inconsistent history and retconning, uh, like with any comic book character that's been around for decades. I mean, it's almost 
a century, but there's the basic idea of how Shazam and Black Adam are different and also connected. Uh, you want to do Shazam's groups and superpowers? Yes. So Shazam's original name was William Joseph Batson. The groups are he is associated with is Marvel Family, Justice Society of America, the Justice League of America, Squadron of Justice. His powers are super strength, super speed, stamina, flight, fearlessness, wisdom, enhanced mental perception, magical lightning. Black Adam, however, his original name was Sokaki. Maybe we don't know. Ha ha. I don't know. Anyways, he's a secret society of supervillains, the Injustice Society, Justice Society of America. He also has high stamina, superhuman strength, speed, flight superhuman knowledge clairvoyance he can hypnotize people omnilingual is that a word is that is that a real word omni interesting so he speaks a lot of languages Just, you know like bilingual he speaks a lot a lot of languages gotcha <laughs> interdimensional travel to the rock of eternity physical enhancement spell source advanced healing electrokinesis nature control and telekinesis so before we go into discussion why don't you give us the last little bit of fun facts, and then we'll go into the discussion. FYI, Perfect. we have like five minutes, so I'm going to have to send a new Zoom link. Um, so fun facts. So DC managed to sue Fawcett Comics, which was the original comic book for Shazam, because they felt Captain Marvel was too similar to their favorite superhero, Superman. Following this, Fawcett stopped printing Captain Marvel comics and sold their rights to DC. To avoid a legal clash with Marvel Comics because of the name Captain Marvel, the name of both Hero and the company, DC rebranded the superhero under the name of Shazam. It wasn't until 2012 that DC officially dropped Captain Marvel and renamed him Shazam for obvious reasons. So a publication in Britain once wrote a comic depicting a superhero who goes by the name of Marvel Man, which is very similar to Shazam. It was even a kid becoming a powerful being by saying a magic word. So Marvel Comics decided to buy the rights to Marvel Man and rebrand it as Miracle Man. But unlike Shazam, Miracle Man is a bit darker take on the concept. So in newer comics, Black Adam was a slave, not royalty. Uh, Black Adam started World War III and defeated the Titans, Doom Patrol, and many others in the process. Black Adam can fight Superman very well. Uh, the one thing he has over Superman is magic, which is one of Superman's big weaknesses, especially if you watch Smallville. Every week, he seems to have some magic take him over Ultraman once broke black Adam's jaw. So he couldn't say Shazam, which honestly that's the best way I feel like to defeat black Adam or any of them. It's just can't say it. Then you can't say it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, on an expedition to being back uh, to bringing his wife back to life, Isis, he killed one of his men and ate him because he was hungry. So he can that's go hardcore. Reasonable. I feel like he's like a, uh, a Raven, not a Ravenclaw, a Slytherin. He's just going to get the job done. <laughs> So Adam has fought alongside the Suicide Squad before. His real slogan, which we do get a catchphrase in the movie, his real slogan is kneel at his feet or get crushed by his boot. So when DC first got Shazam, they created a separate Earth for him and his characters because he was too similar to Superman. But after Crisis on Infinite Earths, the Shazam character was actually brought into the main DC universe. Stargirl once had a crush on Shazam and the Justice Society was getting concerned because of the age difference. So Billy had to reveal his true identity that he is just a child. And then she felt awkward. And my last fun fact is Billy has a tiger friend that was a stuffed animal once that came to life that only him and his friends can see. Interesting. Interesting. Well, we will be right back to discuss Black Adam, the film. All right, my dudes. Well, let's chat about Black Adam, shall we? Riley, starting with you, man, what were your initial thoughts and things when you saw this film? So I thought I thought it was pretty cool. Definitely. Was weird seeing like the rock play like a superhero villain type character but i i get it <laughs> i'm not surprised by it um but i thought the movie was it was pretty good uh it wasn't like the best movie we've had or we've seen but i was i was very happy with it and the justice society was a really nice addition to the DC universe and I'm glad it was included. Yeah. How do you feel? Do you think he was actually kind of like a, the, an anti-hero that we kind of expected from black Adam? Or were you kind of like, I would have liked to have seen more of this. 
Well, I think that the whole anti-hero thing in movies is kind of done weirdly because I feel like they have too many like qualities by the end of the movie that you're that are redeeming. Like by the end of the movie, I feel like we're all kind of rooting for him, but at the end of the day, he's still kind of a a villain and he like murders people. Yeah. So it it's a little weird how it's done. That that's true. It's like it, in True Lies. Yeah, but they were all bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean you kind of like want to believe he's this bad villain thing, but then there's just times where he's just I don't know, I'm not sold on it completely, I guess. Lauren, what do you think? I think Riley kind of nailed it. It was like, I was rooting for him. And there was times where it's like, oh, I'm rooting against Hawkman. I also felt like Hawkman was like, like you give this man two options, like come with us or we're going to kill you. Like, come on, there's got to be a third option. Like I wouldn't want either of those options either. Um, so I feel like, you know, it's, it's like with anything, it's like more communication, use your fists last, but obviously then it wouldn't be an, an action packed superhero movie. But right. I did feel like, uh, yeah, I was definitely rooting for him. Um, I enjoyed this movie more than I expected to. Uh, you know, The Rock is similar to Ryan Reynolds where, okay, he plays the same character in every movie. Like, oh, he's voicing Maui. He's still The Rock. Like, But I did feel like this movie, he wasn't just The Rock. I think he had moments where, yeah, you kind of saw it, like when he was learned how to be sarcastic. Um, but for the most part, like he, I've never seen The Rock this serious before in any of the movies I've seen him in. So I did feel like he... You know, he did that a little better. And um, after learning some of the comic book origin, which we just went over, uh, I felt like it gave me more of a, a perspective on him, too. And um, but you can see why he would be mad and angry. And uh, I really liked it. I love Pierce Brosnan was my favorite in this. I thought he was great. What I found interesting, though, is they did not go into any of the backstory of Hawkman. And I feel like every time we see Hawkman, we always learn, oh, he was cursed and him. You know, that's why he was eager to die, I assumed, was because he wants to go see his wife again. So they didn't mention any of that. So I wonder if he will come back later in something and we'll get origin story from him later so yeah. but i liked it and uh i wish i hadn't known about that cameo at the end because that would have been way more fun to see on screen we'll for get the first to that time. one yeah we will get to that i need to know though riley what how did you feel about hawkman and dr fate in the jla so i i kind of feel like the movie should have been like justice society and black adam like it kind of felt like it was focused on the Justice Society and they played it too, like, too big of a role to just be like a cameo type thing for it to be called Black Adam. It was, it was a weird dynamic, but I really enjoyed the Justice Society. They were awesome. Even like Adam Smasher, which didn't play a huge role in the movie, was he was still awesome. It was funny. He didn't play a huge role in the movie. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, I but, agree. Yeah. They were a wonderful dynamic. I, I agree. It, so I liked the JLA a lot. I do wish that maybe we had gotten some background because if this is set within the DC universe, which it is because spoiler alert, Superman, Henry Cavill is back. I wish, like, what were they doing during the the Steppenwolf stuff? But maybe, who knows? I'm sure they'll sort all of that that, that out. But I, I really enjoyed getting to see them. I thought, you know, Adam Smasher brought some good solid comedy. Cyclone was great. Dr. Fate was everything I wanted. I love him immensely. I love, I love him. Pierce Brosnan killed it in his role. And Elder, it, I just... I do wish that well, you're right. I, it should have been Black Adam and the JLA kind of deal. So it, but over, it, I don't think it detracted from it. It was cool because the the fight scenes are what we kind of came for, and they just fight for two hours. Like once the action starts, it kind of doesn't stop, which is kind of awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And Cyclone, I loved watching her. It was like ballet. Like that was the most graceful, prettiest superpower I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah agreed and it was beautiful like there's a lot of really good colors too i thought as when oh, they did as... have a peacemaker cameo 
the um girl at the end is from peacemaker oh hardcore yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 Harcourt. She was in there. That's I wonder if cool. this takes place before Peacemaker or where, because she's kind of working with Waller and crew in this. Which, right? I was wondering that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish know. they would start even like with with Black Panther and and Doctor Strange and everything. Can y'all give us more details as to when these events take place? Because not it. It seems like nothing is chronological anymore. Right. It, it really doesn't. <laughs> They're like, good luck to you. And it's not like in Star Wars where everybody's like, well, they're using Imperial credits, so it takes place at this time. Like, no, it's just the same currency. We we have no clues. Right. It, I have no idea. I, I don't know. So what were your guys' like favorite moment in this movie, though? Oh, that's a hard one. I, I should always be prepared for this. Why don't you tell us yours? Mine? Oh, man. What we think. I... I genuinely enjoyed kind of like the first fight sequence when they roll up in Condock and Hawk, you know, he just jumps out of the, the jet and kind of becomes Hawkman, gets his, the mace, everything on him. I thought that was a really cool sequence and they just begin beating the crap out of each other. And it's just straight up fighting from that point on. I think that was kind of my favorite sequence. I thought his kind of suit up moment was pretty cool. And the way that they kind of fight and go after it in that fight sequence was kind of really well done because they both got their hits in. Everybody kind of came out powerful and on top in that fight sequence, obviously Black Adam more so. But I think overall, what they did really well there was just making everyone seem powerful. You really felt the hits. And uh, my least favorite moment was anything to do with that stupid kid. Dude, same. <laughs> I hate oh, you didn't like kid. the little kid? What about when he's skateboarding? Why was he skateboarding? It's so dumb. <laughs> so he could get places faster and escape the bad guys that kid that was yeah. the heart of the movie because obviously teth adams saw his son in that kid yeah i mean it's, yeah you don't have the same movie without the kid no i just i don't he didn't serve any like there's that scene where he's trying to rally everybody against the zombies and oh yeah there were some pretty cheesy scenes i did yeah wasn't doing it for me in that sequence he was pretty awful and i was just like oh what are we doing here like Ugh, I just, Any kind of thing like that where you're trying to get a rally going and all of a sudden they just totally switch like demeanor. It's always cheesy. Yeah, I didn't love the cheese in that regard, but I felt like right. it was like you kind of knew something like that needed to happen. So you're kind of like, all right, I'll let it happen, but I don't love how this is happening. Yeah, it's I don't know. But it, it's weird. I'm just going to say Pierce Brosnan was my favorite part. He was just such Damn. an elegant Dr. Fate and just so wise and. And then I loved seeing him, you know, then, I mean, obviously anytime he has a helmet on, it's full CGI, I'm sure. But just watching him like kick ass, it's, you know, yeah, he was Bond, what, 20, 30 years ago, probably 30, you know, mm, yeah, like 30 years ago, he's Bond. But it was, it was a lot of fun to just see him. He's a great actor. And, and I think he was my favorite part. I know that's right. not a scene. <laughs> no, that was, uh, def I definitely get what you're saying, Lauren. Uh, my favorite part was probably the part at the end where he's using all the illusions to fight uh, Sabak, and um, it's kind of like every time Sabak kills one of the illusions, it like zooms into him and it goes to a different like mirrored version of himself, and all the while he he's like contacting black Adam. like yeah. that takes a lot of a lot of mind strength um yeah i uh i had another thought i can't i can't remember now but yeah that gave me loki vibes when he was just like recreating him himself all over the place yeah that was that was really cool yeah i i i agree the, the powers are cool i thought the suits were pretty well done everything was visually kind of beautiful i felt mm -hmm. the cgi over nothing about the cgi was kind of like oh this cgi is weird and there there was that one scene where it like it was a fishbowl of yeah <laughs> black that, 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 the black adam yeah <laughs> turned into a meme now wait yeah. which scene you know where he was flying and had like that fishbowl and it's like yeah it was weird. Hit a fishbowl? Yeah. Not okay. not like an actual fishbowl, like a fish eye effect on his head. Oh, okay. 
I'm like, I have no way. I'm like, what's, I'm thinking like uh, Dr. Fate's helmet or Mysterio or something. I'm like what? All right. Yeah. I wasn't there. I have to go see these memes. Yeah. It's, it's weird. It, it was super weird, but I, I thought uh, overall though, it, it was good. I, there were parts I, it should have ended too. When, you know, they get black Adam, they kind of put him to sleep and everything like they get him to say Shazam and all that stuff. The movie could have ended there and we could have gone on because I understand they kind of needed just the the bad guy and to have everybody team up and fight and all that stuff. But really the movie could have ended there and we could have seen maybe the Superman cameo. He could have come in and been like, all right, I'll keep an eye on him in case he gets out again or something of that nature. I think you needed the big egos next to each other awake. I really like all the uh, Clint Eastwood references and, there was a lot of secret like Indiana Jones references. Yeah. The uh the like standoff in the in the area. I don't even I can't think of words. Um but like I, I just thought it was kind of funny because it's like it, it's it's Black Adam. He literally shoots lightning out of his fingers. How do you think you're gonna win at a standoff? <laughs> Right. Yeah. You get that no. in so many of the movies. It's like you just watch them kill. I mean, I mean, you get that in Star Wars too. It's like, do you really think you have a chance? Right. <laughs> right. Like you see, yeah. he's bulletproof. Yeah. Agreed. I don't know. I, overall, though, this movie was a very strong addition to the DC universe, in my opinion. Like, it's on the right track now that this is kind of the new DC way going forward. I didn't feel the hierarchy was exactly changed. Like we've been promised for 15 years. I think since like 2007 was when. The Rock signed on to play Black Adam, and every year was, the, the hierarchy is going to change. The hierarchy is going to change. Like the, he's been cast as Black Adam longer than the MCU has been an actual thing. And at no point That's was insane. I like, "Yep, this is this just changed comic book movies forever for me." It never once felt that way. <laughs> no, but it's nice that they finally introduced a character that a lot of people didn't like know about. So, and that's what, you know, people have been asking for DC to do for years. Like we don't need another Superman or Batman. So it's good. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Is there, is there anything else you really want to say about this movie? I thought it was interesting how they kind of like changed his backstory a little bit because of the newer comics. Uh, so how the movie like played out is his son got killed by whoever, like somebody shot him with an arrow or whatever. Right. But in the comics, or at least the newer ones, Black Adam kills his own view. His nephew gives him the powers and then he just straight up murders him. So this character... Damn isn't very redeeming but in the movie you kind of feel bad for him because his son got killed by someone else right so i i thought that was interesting obviously i get why they did it but it's the whole anti-hero argument again uh i definitely agree the fact that black adam like he his whole thing is like, he wants to rule the world at one point. That's why him and Shazam fight. That's why him and Superman in the justice league fights. Like he wants to rule and he's a ruler. Whereas at the end, he smashes the throne and he's like, no, these people need a protector. And all. and like, that's not black Adam. Black Adam's an asshole. He serves right. himself. He kind of does like, he does his own thing. He's not over here. Like they need a protector, a watchful knight, a black Adam, if you will. It's like, no, that that's not him. And so that, uh, but of course it's the rock. So maybe maybe he'll lean into that as we go on in the future, but I won't hold my breath, I guess. It's definitely not somebody to be fully trusted. No. He kind of does his I, own thing. I think the post credit scene kind of turns him back into the villain. Um just because he's kind of like an asshole to Amanda Waller and Yeah. I mean, Amanda well, Waller's not a good person either, but... No, no oh, she's God. a terrible person. But to go against Superman, I mean, you automatically know you're... That's the bad guy. Right. Yeah. And it kind of sucks, ben Affleck. Though, and the fact that it just... It, the only thing that sucks to me is 
they kind of don't mention Shazam at all. Like the kid's room doesn't have any Shazam stuff on it. The rock seems very anti Shazam. He's just solely focused on Superman. Like that's cool. Yeah. And all, but like Shazam's like yeah. biggest villain. And we haven't heard anything about Shazam and black Adam together at all. Right. Like that's... I think this was more a black Adam's origin story though. I think when the Shazam movie comes out, I think we will, or I'll be surprised if we don't. Yeah, that's maybe. I, I don't think know. We'll, they're gonna have them like separate a longer than we think, though, which is mm. unfortunate. Yeah, but I still enjoyed the movie. Uh, no, I, I definitely agree. I, I enjoyed the movie, and just yeah, overall though, I, I just I, I wish that he would hype up the Shazam black adam fight more so than superman 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 like superman has his own villains shazam is now about to have a second movie and you don't even acknowledge that but it is what it is do you guys have any final can't even get his nose right that's true nothing do you guys have any final thoughts before we wrap up this episode nope i think that covers it well riley uh do you have anything that you want to share you want to plug where can people find you man i i really appreciate you coming on taking the time to hang out with us uh, it was a lot of fun we'd love to have you back in the future just anything you want people to know about you or anything like that uh i don't really have much gone um i guess <laughs> follow me on twitter <laughs> but uh yeah i'd love to come back on and i I appreciate you guys having me on. This has been, uh, I mean, you guys have been one of my favorite podcasts for a little bit now and it's, it's kind of nice. surreal. <laughs> hey, thanks man. This is your first podcast appearance too. This is the first time you've ever done a podcast. So it's kind of yeah. awesome. And I know you were talking about like this. I've never done one before, but now that you have, you're an official professional podcaster. Now you've been, you've been deemed you're in the circle, man. Feels great. <laughs> <laughs> in the circle. You made it. All of, all of us circle. out there. Now you're going to have people, professional podcast promoters out there being like, hey, pay me $50 and I will promote your podcast. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it on. <laughs> but no, we, we sincerely, we appreciate all the support that you have done for us. Uh, this is something that we love doing. And so hearing people actually enjoy it, it, it means a lot. And actually getting sick to sit down and chat with you and hang out and nerd out a bit was a lot of fun. So Really hope to have yeah. you back on. We'll plan out something else. Maybe we'll get back on for uh, the release of Shazam to kind of continue we'll this say, conversation. Yeah, March 17th. Because March is a stacked month for movies and Shazam will be out. So love to have you back. As for everybody or else. Or May, yeah. Star Wars month. That's true. Look, we got Ooh. all these. There's not just one option. We got plenty. Yes. Yes, indeed. So make sure you guys just follow us, share with a friend. And next week, Lauren, do you know what we're doing next week? Because I never do. Nope. I might, Next week but is I don't Thanksgiving, know. So we're probably going to be doing a Thanksgiving movie to be determined Maybe. potentially with a special guest as well. All that stuff is to be determined. Cause look, I'm like Dom Toretto. I live my life a quarter mile at a time or one podcast episode at a time. Every time I see what we're doing the next week, we end up having a scheduling conflict or another That's hurricane true. hits Florida or something happens. <laughs> That's also true. And yeah, so I'm done. Everything's going to have to be a surprise from now on. God's we will plan. be doing a lot of Christmas ones soon. <laughs> We will be. We're gearing up. Christmas starts December and it's already not Christmas in my household because my wife will let me. But in my mind, in my heart, in the <laughs> I outside am the weather, wife. it's Christmas time. Uh-huh. So, so not, I'm not his wife, but in my house, I can put up Christmas stuff is what I'm true. saying. My, ma- my, my overlord has deemed it's not appropriate until Thanksgiving Day. So until then, everybody, let us know what you, you want to hear, what you want to see, and we will see you next week. Cheers, my dudes.